Bakersfield. Well, the last time that Oklahoma and Cal State Bakersfield played a basketball game, their matchups came down to last second shots. And for Cal State Bakersfield, it propelled them to their first ever NCAA appearance thanks to Dietrich Basel and his game winning three pointer to lift the Roadrunners past New Mexico State in the WAC Championship to earn the automatic bid um, for Cal State Bakersfield and a number 15 seed in the West region. Now, their Friday opponent, Oklahoma, who earned a number two seed in the West region, last time we saw them play it was uh, last Friday against West Virginia. Last second shot. In fact, it was a half-court prayer by Buddy Heald, and it looked like it was an answered prayer. He hit it. But the celebration, although it was extremely jubilant, was brief because the shot didn't count. The shot came a second too late after they reviewed it on the monitor. So both games had some drama in it, but for different reasons. Still, the Sooners are going to be a big favorite, as you can imagine. Number two seed OU versus Cal State Bakersfield, number 15 seed. And Friday's uh, West Region first round, and to add even more of an advantage for the Sooners, who will have the talent advantage and the experience advantage, it also, too, will be played just 30 minutes from Oklahoma's campus. That is at Chesapeake Arena in Oklahoma City. Where if the Sooners take care of business, and there's no reason to believe that they won't, the Sooners uh, should be playing on Sunday against either Virginia Commonwealth, the 10th seed, or number 7th seed, Oregon State, out of the Pac-12. Before we get into that, again, for the Sooners, one heck of a season. 25-7, and seven, um, you know, getting to the semifinals of the uh, Big 12 tournament and bowing out to a West Virginia team that, that's played just as well this season. I thought West Virginia should have been a two-seed. I was surprised that they didn't get a higher seed uh, than number three, but that's just um, that's just the way it laid out. For the Sooners, I thought their um, – I thought their draw was pretty good, okay? I thought for the, the committee, and, you, and you've heard a lot of criticism these past few days about the job that the committee did or the, the poor job that they did, and, and in some ways, rightfully so. I mean, I, I thought that, you know, South Carolina should have made the tournament. Monmouth should have gotten into the tournament, too. You can make an argument for St. Mary's as well um, and St. Bonaventure because I, I really don't think Syracuse losing five of the last six should have got in. Vanderbilt, based upon, you know, um, the fact that they finished five games worse than South Carolina and got killed by Tennessee early in the SEC tournament. I don't see how Vanderbilt uh, got in. Um, I don't see how Tulsa got in. And yeah, you know, and I know they're only two hours from where I live and for Tulsa. Yeah, I mean, be happy you got in the tournament, but still they, they shouldn't have made it. I, I don't think that their resume, the way that they finished the season, really warranted uh, them making the tournament. But it is what it is, right? But Having said that, for the Sooners, I thought the committee got it right. Um, you grade them on their body of work, and they played a pretty good non-conference schedule. And, look, they didn't lose a non-conference game. It's not like they played complete patsies either. They played some good competition, and the win over Nova by 20, I think, really helped. And beating Wisconsin helped as well, too. And in the Big 12, they, they, they beat everybody in the league except for Kansas. So that helped as well. So 25-7, and seven and... You know, to add even more to the Sooners' great season, you know, Buddy Heald is on the cover of Sports Illustrated um, this next edition and in prime position, it looks like, to win the John Wooden Award for National Player of the Year. We'll wait to see the official announcement, but right now it looks good for him uh, to do just that, trying to become the first Sooner since Blake Griffin uh, from a few years ago in the late 2000s to win that highly prestigious honor. Uh, so the Sooners know that it's there. I mean, a, a deep run is there for them. No reason why they shouldn't at least get out of Oklahoma City with a couple of wins this weekend and then propel themselves to Anaheim uh, for the rest regional semifinal and championship, which we'll talk about later. But for right now, those first two games look like ones that they should be able to win. Now, for Cal State Bakersfield, if you're looking at it from the other side of the coin, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be completely honest um, not only uh, did I not know if, if Cal State Bakersfield was good before last week, I never even heard of Cal State Bakersfield before last week, okay? I'm not going to lie, okay? The only thing I knew about Bakersfield, the only thing I knew about Bakersfield was the fact that it was in California and country music singer Buck Owens was from Bakersfield, the late Buck Owens, you know, from Hee Haw 
You know, only reason why I knew the, about the correlation between Buck Owens and Bakersfield was because of the song, Streets of Bakersfield. You know, he did that song twice. I think once in the 60s and then, you know, did the collaboration with uh, Dwight Yoakam. You know, Dwight Yoakam always looked up to Buck Owens. But we don't want to get too far away from basketball, but that's really my knowledge of Bakersfield, okay? That, that's about all I know about Bakersfield until last week. So I definitely had to do my research and find out, okay, what are the Roadrunners all about? Okay, how did they get this far to make their first ever NCAA tournament appearance? Well, this is just their ninth year of playing Division One basketball. They were a D2 school prior to that, playing the Western Athletic Conference. Um, and their nicknames are Roadrunners, and it's only fitting when you think about it because they rely on speed. I mean, it's, it's not what you would call a tall team for the most part. It is a team that will rely on its quickness, and in a way, they're like West Virginia. They'll press you. They'll force turnovers. They force about 13 and a half per game, and if Oklahoma does have an Achilles heel, it is turnovers. The Sooners committed 20 turnovers against West Virginia, and that was very costly in that loss last Friday to the Mountaineers in Kansas City. Sooners got to take care of the ball, and Buddy Heald, you know, it wasn't his best game either, and West Virginia was a big, big reason why. You know, West Virginia uh, was able to fight through the screens, and they were able to force Buddy to take shots, you know, parts of the court that maybe he wasn't accustomed to taking and didn't like to take. And you, you credit the Mountaineers for that. So there's no doubt that Cal State Bakersfield is going to try to force Heald into unfamiliar positions or uncomfortable positions. But they don't have the talent that West Virginia had. But they play a style that West Virginia has. And you can bet that the Roadrunners, win or lose, and most likely they'll lose, but at least they're going to come to Oklahoma City and play a style that's only surrendered 63 points per game. That's pretty good defense right there. Um, their best player, in my opinion, is their point guard. Guy that's only 5'10", but he plays pretty big, and yeah, he's a guy to hit the game winning shot. That's Diedrich Basil, uh, 5'10", but he can create his own shot. Um, you know, he can cross court you up if you're not careful. Um, he could definitely create for others. So you have to watch out for him. Uh, Damian uh, Durham, 6'4 guard. You know, he averages about 12 points a game. Uh, he's definitely going to uh, create a lot of attention as well. Um, a guy that's a pretty versatile player for Cal State Bakersfield, and that is um, Ali Ahmed. Okay, averages 13 points a game, 6 rebounds, and makes nearly half the shots he puts up, 47% from the field. So he's definitely a versatile player. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, so what's the deal with Cal State Bakersfield? You know, why aren't they better than the 15th seed if you're mentioning all these good things about them? Okay, well, here's the catch. Cal State Bakersfield is not what you call a very productive offensive team. This year, about 70 points per game, and they only average five three-pointers per game, which is not even in the top 320 in um, the NCAA, okay? I mean, that's not even the top 320 teams. Um, it, it's a squad that, uh, that, that generally does rely on their defense to win, okay? And they'll try to ugly this game up. Trust me, they will. Um, but like I said, five three-pointers per game is about uh, what they average um, percentage-wise, three-point-wise. Um, I think they're somewhere in, in the low 30s. It's just not uh, very reliable. And you get the feeling that if the Sooners can get a couple of good runs in this game, that that could be enough, and maybe more than enough, to put Bakersfield um, in a very, very bad position to where the Sooners could have complete control of this game. Because I don't think Bakersfield will have enough offense in this game. Now, this is one of those rare games, too, where the Sooners are going to have an advantage in the paint um, as far as height. Um, because... Cal State Bakersfield, in comparison to a lot of the teams that the Sooners have played this year, just don't have a lot of it. Um, and that's where Oklahoma, I think, with Ladin in the paint, with Spangler in the paint, could have an advantage right there. So we will see um, how the Sooners front court, and also to the bench, and can Christian James put together another nice game like he did against West Virginia, Virginia despite the loss last Friday. Um, this is a game where the Sooners should be able to, you know, mid-first half, late first half, establish a double-digit lead, and then early second half uh, completely take charge and then get reserves in the game. There's no reason to believe that, talent-wise, Cal State Bakersfield can hang with Oklahoma. It's a style, though, that could give Oklahoma fits after the first two or three TV timeouts, but I just don't think offensively um, Cal State Bakersfield um, shows um, the consistency from the field to keep up with the Crimson the Cream. So I'll look for Oklahoma probably to win by about, you know, 20, 25 points in this game. 
um, and then call off the dogs after that. So I look for the Sooners to win comfortably and then get ready for VCU um, or Oregon State for the uh, Sunday second round. That's my look at Oklahoma versus Cal State Bakersfield. So long.